a very blessed good morning to the church. We want to welcome you to our service this morning. We are the Shekinah Wesley Holiness Church, located in St. Philip in lovely Barbados in the West Indies. And we are pleased to have you join with us today. Welcome to all those who are joining with us online. At this time, we are going to stand and bring our service to a start. We want to consider a portion of reading in the book of St. John, chapter 6. And we'll be reading from verse 22 through to verse 40. I'll invite the congregation to read with me. And those of you who are joining us online, you are certainly encouraged to follow with us as we read. Beginning to read. The following day, when the people who stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one where into his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, for there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. Then the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples. They also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, which when camest thou hither? Jesus answered, them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. They then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone may seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Let's pause for prayer. Father, this day we bless your name. We are so grateful, Father, because you are the true bread from heaven. We want to thank you, Lord, because this morning all we need to, all men need to, is believe on you 
and they shall be raised up at the last day. Father, touch our hearts this morning. Touch those who will hear us online, Father. Touch those who will come into the sanctuary today. Touch our hearts, Father, that we will be moved, Lord, to believe on you, to trust in you, to put our hope in you today, Lord, because then we know, Father, that we shall have that which you have desired for us. Father, this morning as we come, we commit our service into your hands. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will touch our musicians, touch our worship team. We pray, Father, Lord, that you will breathe upon them even now. We pray, Father, that your spirit will pervade the sanctuary, God, and you will help, Lord, that our worship, O oh God, will ascend unto you as a sweet smelling savor, that you will take pleasure in that which we offer. That the fruit of our lips today, O oh God, will be such that will bless your name, that will be pleasing in your sight. Father, we pray today that you will touch the man of God who will bring your word. And we are praying, Father Lord, today that he will speak not with enticing words of man's wisdom. That it will not be by might nor by power, God. But we pray that it would be by your spirit today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for being in our midst today. Thank you, Lord, for taking control of all that shall happen here today, God. And we bless you for all that shall be accomplished according to your will today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, O oh God, and we declare that you are good, Lord. And we want to thank you for being with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to invite our worship team Shabbat, and they are led by Brother Merlin Yard, and be, he will be assisted by Sister Iris Boyce and Sister Twanet Siri. May we raise a hallelujah today unto our God as we worship. Over to the worship team. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom to God in the words of Christ. Clap your hands, all ye people. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to transcend from the earth today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With our praise, with our thanksgiving, with our worship this morning. Hallelujah. That thing that you're thinking about now, we leave it to serve. That, 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 that trouble, thing that is troubling your heart, we leave it aside. That person, we leave that aside. Uh, the money that we need, we leave that aside. And we're focusing on God now. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to bless His name. Hallelujah. God said, I don't want your money. Alright? I don't want your money. When you bring the gift to God, hallelujah. You know what? Uh, that's for our benefit. We're making a deposit on our account. God said, thanksgiving is what I want from you. I want thanksgiving. He said, you, 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 you can't on a thousand years of mine. You see, you think I'm hungry? Uh, you think I'm hungry? You, everyone hungry will ask you. Oh. I don't drink the blood of goats and bulls. Hallelujah. I want thanksgiving from you. Anybody ready to give God thanks? Anybody ready to give God praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, we, and when we give God thanks with a thankful heart, hallelujah, then we will freely give out of our possessions because we know it's worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody know that the love of God endures forever? Oh, praise the Lord. Come on, saints. Let's give God some thanks. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. It's love and truth forever.
Hallelujah. We do not serve an idol. A God who has hands can't do anything. Feet but cannot walk. Mouth but cannot speak. Ears but cannot hear. The God we serve is not a fairy tale. The God we serve is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Some of you may know this one. Fall in love with me. The others will know it.
have been given to us. Your name, your word declares that if we believe in our hearts the things that we require of you, then you shall give to us the things that we say. And Father Lord, this morning, your word that song like this says, you are the God that healeth. And Lord, we want to admit these individuals at the altar before you today. We pray, Father Lord, that you will touch their bodies, Lord. Whatever the concern be, Father. Father, there may be those who have taken bones, Lord. There may be those who have Oh God, Father, there may be those who have conditions of the mind, oh God. Father, there may be those, Lord, who have problems with their knees, their fingers, their eyes, their nose, their ears. Whatever the concern is this morning, we lift each and every individual before you. And we pray that you will reach your healing hand down and you will touch them. You will touch them all, my God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would reverse the malady within their body, O oh God. We pray, Father, Lord, that you would turn aside the adversity that's affecting them today, God. And we pray, Father, Lord, that you would raise them up in strength, O oh God. We pray you would knit bones together, O oh God. You would strengthen.
good to you. God is good to all of us. And we come to a privilege to be able to come into his sanctuary for a moment and to give him praise. The Bible reminds us that in reality, from the rising of the sun to the going down, He's really worthy. In fact, everyone who really prays him the way he deserves to be praised, we cannot stop. And we'll praise him for all eternity, and he will still be worthy. So when the picture a million years from now, you have the picture in your mind a million years from now. The year is now one million two thousand and twenty-four. You're looking good. Better than ever. Yes. Amen. Better than ever. But we have to have a picture of God's goodness. And His goodness never ceases. And we are a yeah, blessed people this morning and a rich people because of the time we can spend giving Him honor and praise. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness to us, for your loving kindness to us. We don't deserve it. But because you are love, because you love us, then you freely bestow upon us all things. We thank you that you allow it to reign upon the just and the unjust. You are perfect. And Father, we thank you this morning for your perfect love toward us. May your word minister to our hearts today will we be challenged to love you and to love our neighbor as ourselves and we want to commit the remainder of this time in this sanctuary into your hands bless the word that it will be rich toward us that we will truly receive the engrafted word that will be a part of us that we will grow as the word is mixed with faith that we can be ambassadors for Christ. We ask these mercies today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can take your seat this morning. It's good to be found in the sanctuary. And we give God thanks for the we only really call it the awesome time of worship. There's a word I want to share with us, even as I would welcome you. I'll give you a more official welcome after. But it is good to see so many of you in the house. Would you just tell your neighbor, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Please just tell them that. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. And we are, we are continuing our look at the book of St. Luke, chapter 7. We'll pick up from verse 15. St. Luke, chapter 7, verse 15 to 28. But we can put it for me. So Luke 7, 15. There is a procession on the way to a burial because the young man has died and obviously when someone dies, the next step is to bury them. That's how it is in the natural. But here it says that Jesus comes and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was, sometimes you gotta know your tenses. Sometimes you have to know your tenses in your life. Paul speaks about those who were liars and 
all kind of all kind of things. And Paul says, and such were some of you. You have to know your tenses. And he that was dead. He that was dead. Let me tell you this morning, as a child of God, you must remember that you are dead, but you are alive. He that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor or the underline that word there. This rumor of him went forth. You know, rumors spread fast, boy. Right now, there are rumors about you. You don't even know them. Some are good, and some are not so good. But the rumor went forth throughout all Judea. And throughout all the region round about. And the, the, the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you he that should come? Or look before another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come? Or look before another. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Father, thank you for your word, and bless our hearts as we will receive it in Jesus' name. And for what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. The question of identity, that's the topic this morning, the question of identity. And here we see John the, ba John the Baptist, a man born with a mission. In fact, even before he was born, God revealed his mission. And John the Baptist has a mission, a mission to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. He is one crying, prepare the way. You know, God doesn't always just turn up. God has a way of preparing the way. God likes to make preparation. God doesn't do things any or how, any way. God is a God of order. God ain't made man and drop him in space and then say, I gotta find somewhere for him to live. God is a God of order. So he prepared the way for Jesus. He challenged men to be ready. There was a season in which he let men know that a change is coming. So that John the Baptist says that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, what is it? What is the obligation for men? Repent. He was saying God is about to do something new and his expectation is that men need to repent. And so John takes up this mission and a mission is something that is fulfilled generally when we have a vision. Because any mission that is worthwhile is going to have challenges. It's going to meet with obstacles. But a vision is a picture of the preferred future, the kind of future you want. The kind of outcome you are anticipating. 
That's the vision you have. That is why you stick it through the tough times because you have a vision. And so here is John, committed to the mission. And because of his mission, he is challenged to speak out or led to speak out against Herod because Herod has married his brother's sister, Herodias. And John says to him, it is not lawful to marry her. But I want to give you a little context found in Matthew chapter 14, if you'll be patient with me. Matthew chapter 14, from verse 1. Matthew 14. It says, At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus. Now, I'm speaking about John the Baptist here. And said unto his servants, Let me start that again. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. I want to say to you because somebody says something doesn't mean it's true. Because somebody says something doesn't mean that you have to swallow it whole. But he said, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And when he would not, when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the old sake. And then which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. The rumor was spreading that John the Baptist had come back from the dead. Listen, be careful what you believe. Be careful what you believe. Rumors and reality can sometimes get mixed up very easily. The reality was that John was in prison because of his faith. Well, I should say really his stand because he said it is not lawful to marry this woman. But when John found himself in a dark dungeon, his faith began to get a little wavery. His faith in Jesus was a little shaky. And it almost says to me that we have to be very careful that sometimes our apparent stand or standing when it is really examined is really kind of shaky. I'll tell you what I mean. Herod said, 
This is John the Baptist. We heard earlier that all the things that were said about Jesus, all these rumors spread far, they spread wide. And so it says to me that things are not always what people say. Things are not always how they seem. Because it seemed to Herod, his explanation was, the only reason this man is doing such mighty works is that he is John the Baptist, come back from the dead. People are not always who they seem or what they appear to be. In this sentence, we are not always who or what we appear to be or seem to be. And so this morning, we're looking at the question of identity. Because identity can be a matter of rumor or identity can be a matter of reality. The rumor was that Jesus was John the Baptist. The rumor was that he was a prophet. But the reality was the reality was that he was the son of God. Reality is something that is deep. Reality is something that we all need to be aware of. And the, the reality of our identity is something that we need to be clear on as believers. In the book of St. John, chapter 1, and you'll bear with me this morning if I overdo the scriptures. In the book of St. John, chapter 1, verse 43, it reads, the day following, Jesus would go forth to Galilee and finds Philip and says unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip, follow the story, Philip finds Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of of Joseph. And the family said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, look. And Israelite in whom is no other. Nathaniel saith unto him, Let knowest thou me, where you know me from? I know meeting you for the first time. How you qualify to assess me and tell people who I who I is, as you would say. Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Listen, you know, sometimes people under surveillance by the FBI and the CS, CSOs and all these things. But you know that Jesus got us under serious surveillance. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto you, I saw you under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Sometimes we want to see greater things. 
we want to see the greater things first. But I'm saying to us this morning that the church of Jesus Christ is going to see true greater things. And I said to you last time, this is 2024. We are going to see greater things than what happens in the house of God. We are going to see greater things than a celebration of worship. God has greater. He says, look, I have looked on you and this is who you are. And when Jesus gives him the assessment, he agrees with Jesus. He says, you are the Son of God. Can I tell you this morning, Jesus is never wrong. Whatever Jesus assessment Jesus gives you of, of you, it is on target. You don't need a pastor to stand up here this morning and say to you, Brother Boyce, Jesus has already spoken to many of us. And his assessment when he says to you, listen, my child, look at the son that says, I missed my time with you. When God speaks to us, he doesn't even need to advertise it. He just has a way of speaking to us in so many ways. But the question is, are we going to acknowledge who we are and who he is because when we acknowledge who we are and who he is, greater things are coming. I have a little concern that sometimes we are equating our spiritual growth with certain things. But I believe that this is a time that we are in when our spiritual growth has to start with coming clean with God. So I'm saying to us this morning, our true identity is a matter of godly insight. When Jacob wrestled with the man till the breaking of day, Jacob wanted a blessing. He wanted to be blessed. The man had money. He had gone with Laban and Laban had tried his best to rob the man and push him down, change his wages 20 times. And Jacob said, look, if, I had been, if it had not been for God on my side, I would have left here empty, empty, empty. But instead, I have come up bigger and greater than you. But even though he had all this wealth, all these riches, he still recognized, I need to be blessed. Listen, the reason why there are millionaires and billionaires who can't sleep, who, they got 10 cars, they got 10 houses. So I ain't telling you don't get 10 cars or 10 houses. If God bless you with 10 cars and 10 houses, say thank you, Jesus. I have a little challenge in the house of God, you know. Our thinking sometimes concerns me because there are Christians who when you talk to them and you speak about blessing, they say, oh, well, you know, I just want to be comfortable. I want to be rich. I just want to be comfortable. But if you want to be rich, when you get rich, four, two, three, seven, not for you. Two, six, seven, four, three, four, two. Come in, your face and fill up and ask for David Garner. Bank account number. I can give you it right now. But we don't want to be wealthy. We don't want to be rich. As if being rich or wealthy is a curse. If rich and wealthy was a curse, Abraham would be a poor man. But God blessed him with riches and riches and riches. You know what? His heart. The problem is not the riches. The problem is our heart. When Isaac was eating up a little living, 
and got in a famine and God said plan. The Bible says he planted in famine and God blessed him a hundred. He increased a hundredfold and God blessed him. And the man became rich and went forward and, be, and became very great. So that the Philistines envied him because of how great he had become. And we just want God enough for ourselves. And when there's a need somewhere, we look in the spirit. There is nothing wrong with being blessed. Jabez, the Bible says, he says, look, Lord, would you bless me indeed and enlarge my territory? But then he was wise, he said, and that your hand would be upon me. You see, a lot of people want, a lot of people can get rich, because they did get rich, the pastor can ask them. They're gone. They got no more time for church. They're busy. But Jabez was a wise man. He said, Lord, I want you to bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. But listen, keep me from wrap me that it will not cause pain. Keep your hand upon me. Keep directing me. Don't let me go. Because these things can get to your head. Godly insight. God wants to share with us who we are. And some of us are operating in financial mediocrity when God has a plan for you to be operating in financial abundance. Some of you for the last 20 years Every year you worry about how you pay the house insurance. Every year you worry about how you pay car insurance. Every year you worry about. And you think because you remember that God is that is God is saying, Oh, bless you, bless you. That is wonderful. That is wonderful, brother. That is wonderful, sister. Jabez went before God and he said, God, I need you to bless me. I'm going to say that God is God not for everybody to be a millionaire. I really can't say that. But I will say this. That getting rich, I guess we're getting rich, or getting wealthy, is not about whether you are a Christian or not. Otherwise, only Christians will be rich. But there are principles that people employ. If you have a business, that meets a need, that solves the problem of many, and people are paying you for it. Unless you tell them, don't pay me, you, you got to get rich. So the ungodly are not rich because they ask God to make them rich. It's because they get up and do what they had to do. There's a parable in which Jesus, the point of it, the point of the parable is that the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. He spoke a parable in which there was a man who was working for his master, and things went south, as someone said. And he got wind that he was going to be fired. You know, this is this is Jesus' parable, not mine. And so because he knew that he was going to be put out, he sat down and he began to do an assessment. He said, that's why you see, after all that we do in the house of God, I tell you last Sunday, if you need to take a Sunday off, sit down home and tell watch TV, sit down home and think about your life. And see what you need to put before God. The Bible says that this man, who was about to be put out, he sat down and he did an analysis. This is Jesus' story. He said, I am too proud to beg. He said, I ain't begging nobody for nothing. That ain't me. I would rather do it all. Than 
bag. So I took problem with the bag and a bag. And then he said, my hands too soft to do hard work, hard labor. I can't work hard. He said, I know my, I know my limitations. I know myself. I am no beggar, and I am not a man of work. So Jesus says, he went to all the persons that owed his master money, and he began to do some negotiations because he understood what was coming and he began to make preparations, appropriate preparations that would meet the need that would turn up. A lot of us meet needs that we know were coming and then we act as if we didn't know this thing was going to come. You've got to be wise. Jesus said the children of light are wiser than the children of the kingdom because they know they're going they to they the, 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 the pray and on. So they know they're going to make provision in place. But sometimes and I have nothing because against prayer God. We need to pray. But I'm saying that there are times when we need to not only pray, but we need to get a plan and pursue it and be diligent, be determined, have some, some guts, some stickability, and see things come to pass. Everything will not happen just because you pray. The things God will challenge you and want you to get up and do ABC. That's the reality. The question of identity is a matter of godly insight. In this book, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite books, The Burning Bush. The, the late minister, Jeffrey Cox, wrote concerning Paul, the Apostle Paul. It was as if God had introduced him to himself. If only we would each get an introduction to who we really are, I think we would have a different church. A lot of us, we need an update. You know, there are some people, the same, to borrow the psychological terminology, there are some people, the same triggers have been triggering you. You need an update. For some people, the same challenges have been causing you to stop holding your tracks. Every time you make a decision to go forward and you meet a particular challenge, you stop. Every time you get disappointed, you start with enthusiasm and the first disappointment you meet, you dominate the dumps. I'm saying to us this morning, we need God to update who we are. Stop saying, Listen, you've got to begin to see yourself differently. I have a smartphone. And I went and updated it. That was a problem, though. But I'm saying to you that when God updates you, it's a good update. You know, Listen, we call a virus. Sometimes the old system has some, what's the term you use, Doc? I, I, I can't say loopholes. Some vulnerabilities. I can think of vulner vulnerabilities. And, and I'm told that a virus is the most common malware, named for their ability to spread and infect like a biological virus. These malicious programs attach themselves to clean, fi clean files and spread throughout a computer system, corrupting files and damaging the system's operation. Listen, some Christians, they are operating 
that are damaging our brain and system. I, I didn't know it too. Some of us got some things in there, some, some malware that seem to want to attach. All of us have some, I believe. Maybe it was, maybe it was time to go on this morning that I have. So tell me something about people that. But a virus is a serious thing because when it affects the clean files and starts to get in there and corrupt, when you expect to carry an operation, you get some kind of error. Things stall up, things hold up. It says this means the virus can be dormant on a system until the infected file is executed. Let me see Christians who are so Christianly until. You know, sometimes we can be so Christianly until. All of us have our, maybe have our untils. That particular thing that has made us behave very unchristian. It is just as though that thing is able to execute. And all the Jesus never of my soul seems to give way to other things. This morning we don't need a northern antivirus. The psalmist said, when he recognized that here is a man after God's own heart. When he recognized that a virus had got into his spirit and infected him, and he recognized that that exe file had been executed. He said, Lord, create me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. That is someone being proactive. We are told in Luke that many rumors began to spread about Jesus. And the truth is, friends, that we can't comfort, we can't stop rumors, but we need to know what the reality is. Because I'm saying sometimes there are rumors about us that are not true. And when they say there are rumors that are not true, so this the rumor is this is a man or a woman of God who is who loves God with all their heart and is faithful to God with the last breath. And something that ain't true at all. Sorry, church. John is in a dark dungeon and he needed to come up, not physically. John's issue was not the fact that he was in a dark space, probably a dark, damp space physically. John's issue was that he was in a dark space spiritually. He wasn't quite sure. He needed some kind of confirmation as to who this Jesus was. He wanted to get an answer to an issue in his life. I want to say to us this morning, when all is said and done, each of us have a responsibility to identify the true issue in our lives and by God's grace begin to deal with it. Sometimes you think the issue is, I need more money. If I have more money, I'll be a nicer person. Some people believe that. They say, I'm this way because I'm edgy and anxious, or so because I ain't got much money. That's why. But if I had enough money, I'll be a sweet person. That's what some people tell themselves. Some people say, no, I will be a nicer person. I will be a, a, a sweeter person if I had a man or a woman. But of the opposite sex, of course. Okay. That's what they tell themselves. I'm this way because 
I, I, I'm, I'm single. I feel we're not single. I feel we're married. I will sweet. I will see. I can see the the engagement ring. I can see the wedding ring. And I can see the caring. What is the boy saying suffering? You don't deal with the suffering. You are going to have three rings. Engagement ring, wedding ring, and caring. Right? You can substitute that for prospering. Right? That is all. But sometimes we think that we, we need these things. Sometimes that is not really the issue, you know. Because there are many persons who said money was the issue and they, they have money and they still got the same issue still. The money, money can only deal with money problems. Money can deal with your issues. Money can deal with your thinking. Money can deal with a lot of things. A man or woman can deal with everything in your life right now. So don't put that burden on them. If I depend on my wife to be happy, and if she depended on me to be happy, no, no, no. We, we gotta be. We have to be happy persons. We can't come to a relationship expecting you gonna make me happy. No, boy, that, that is stress. And so I want to say to you, to you men who are not married, find a Proverbs 31 woman. And can I say to you women, be a Proverbs 31 woman. Now I'm talking as if about all the different businesses and all these things and all that. I want to read the part that I want you to focus on. A couple of verses. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband, of her husband. A woman has one husband. Amen? Amen. You only have one. I am not your husband. That's her. Every woman has, who is married has one husband. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil as long as he is good. It's ready. Proverbs 31, 12. It says she will do him good and not evil. All the, all the days of her life. Hey, I almost read his life. She will do him good. Women, do your husband good. Do him good. Do him every way good. You can interpret that in a good adult way or a nice child friendly way. She will do him good and not evil. Now let me, let me read it and before you quickly so you get the message. Can we read it as we can find a virtuous woman? But what is the scripture really saying? A capable, so man, you're, you're looking for a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman. So, women, you are capable, intelligent, virtuous. So when that man comes, comes along, he needs to know that he is dealing with a capable, intelligent, virtuous woman. And so when he tells you foolishness, Sift it through your head and ask yourself, does he think he is speaking to a fool? Who is he who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels. 
and her value is far above rubies or pearls. Look, I am so rich. I am so rich. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently. He got me when the phone put down. Pick it up. Or when they hear ringing, peep and see. Jeff. Jeff? Who's Jeff? Who's Jeff? Who's Jeff? And when, when she comes, oh, um, by the way, um, a Jeff, a Jeff call for you. And you pause in there. Okay, thank you. Um, so who's Jeff? He's work for you. Who's Jeff? <laughs> who's Jeff? Just, just, a, just a fellow who did. How long you didn't know Jeff? How often is call you? The heart of her husband does safely trust, safely trust in her because she's a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently and relies and believes. He relies on and believes in her securely. So when my wife tell me, mm, that shirt, mm -hmm. that don't suit you. I, I, I trust her. I put it back. We were in Panama and I was picking up some shirts and he said, this year, 2024, they got to come up fresh. Fresh. But she remembered that fresh, they have different meanings. So I put all this fancy shirt, I was in the mirror looking at it in the store. I thought it was rigged and ugly. Like, it was so nice. Taking pictures of it and then I didn't ask the shirt. I said, look at that picture of me. Nope. That was the end of it. Because they know she's what she wants to set me right. There's some people when you ask them things out of envy, they will tell you, mmm, that ain't really, that ain't really your style. And then the next week they go out and stay impressed. <laughs> they are happy to pass by the same store when you tell them, what's all this in harmony? And the next few buttons with the same dress that they sue you. And then they, I don't know. But he relies on and believes in her securely so that he has no lack of honest gain or need of this honest spoil. She comforts, encourages. Ladies, men need to be comforted. Men need to be encouraged. And does him only good as long as there's life within her. Oh boy. Life. Identity. Who are you this morning? What is the real issue in your life? We can't always determine the rumors but we have to decide what the we we have to determine what the reality is. I don't care what people talk, say about me, that is the truth. I don't really care. But I know the truth and there are some things that I challenge myself that I have to deal with in my life. So if the rumor is Pastor D is the happiest fellow on planet Earth, he's so carefree, he's so he ain't got a problem, not a worry, not a care. But I know I got some fears and some worries. Your, I got a demon. I can't live based on your perception or your thought. I got to live in my reality. And so there are times when, even in the midst of a service, and I'm glad to see people making their way back to the altar, because this is the church of God. The altar is a place of help. I hear people now, and they said, you got to be careful you listen to. Some people miserable and they want the whole world miserable. I see people on Facebook and they're saying, oh, you know, these pastors, 
they, they, their life goal, they get off on how many people run to the altar on Sunday morning. That makes their week. Then really. People come to the altar because they have a, a need. And the Spirit of God is prompting you and telling you, make a move. So then it is just that move that makes a difference. Than just sitting down there and accepting things as they are. When you step up, God is able to do something even through that move that you make. John is at the point where he's entertaining rumors. And he has a decision to make. But we can sit down and entertain all the rumors or we can address the reality in our lives. Paul and Silas went about preaching about Jesus. They had preached about how powerful this Jesus is that he could transform your life. They had preached about all the things he did. What a great person he was. How they had committed themselves to Jesus and many of you needed to commit that same commitment and serve Jesus faithfully. Now what happened in the name? Bible scholars, Paul and Silas, now what happened next? They were beaten. They were beaten and then they were thrown in prison. Why am I making this statement this morning? Because unless our identity is only as good as we feel. And when things get hard and rough, we want to take on a different identity. But friends, your identity is your identity. And so Paul and Silas are in prison. Their backs are sore. They don't know what's going to happen next. But they made up their mind that they were not going down without a prayer and some praise. So this, what you make up your mind to do is the difference. And so even in prison, the, these men began to pray and began to praise. So you've got to open your mouth and turn the odds in your favor. You know, you would have thought that a decision to praise God would turn their situation around. And I'm saying to us that sometimes we got to not look at our situation and think that we are helpless, but sometimes there's something within our power that can turn that situation around. Even though a decision to praise God can make such a big difference. It was David who said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. So in other words, we say, look, I am never defenseless. I am a child of God. I have a father who hears me and therefore I can call upon him. And, that call in it, and in calling upon him, a change can come about in my situation. You're a child of God, saints. Your identity is you are an ear and a joint ear with Christ. We are seated together in heavenly places with Him. You are not a yard fowl this morning. We are like the eagles according to the Word of God. We have the capacity to mount up. We have the capacity to soar. So anytime you encounter turbulence, you have the ability to rise higher. You know, sometimes in life you feel as though you just want to get down in the mud. Get down in the mud. Somebody, you want to park your car, you just come up, you come and turn and to come up, and somebody come and drive you zoop, straight in. And the spirit, or a spirit, the spirit from before start to beckon you 
to get out of your car. Park in the front there is. So the guy get up and get up and walk the smaller than you. Because you gotta be sensible. If, if, if Lex is the one and Malik by the boys, I mean you gonna just go Lex off here, but but even so it is the attitude. It is the attitude. Come on, you're you not a you're not gonna get dumb in the mud. That's person like, let them see, let, let them see who you is. Get dumb in the mud and let them know that you're in a sweet brain. No, no. No, you, you gotta think, you gotta think through. Come on, rise up. You can rise above it. Rise above it. Thank you, God, that I can find a better part. Move on. You know what I mean, fault. The Bible says you're righteous or as bold as a lion. Come on. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Begin to live and live like a lion. You ain't no salmon top retriever. For those who come from abroad, that's like a common, common breed. Nothing, nothing can kill them. Dog, you can eat anything and just survive. Right? But you are, the richest are as bold as a lion. Come on, you don't gotta say a word sometimes in your life. If you, 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 you ain't no dog, come on, the richest are as bold as a lion. Do not let people be, make you behave as if you've lost your identity? Know who you are. Let me close with this this morning. And this is the final close. This is the second or the third, this is the final one. Final close. And I'm going to need you to, to join me in this one as we close up this morning. So Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, created, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined or planned beforehand for us. So I want to tell you never this morning, tell them right now, God is working a good plan for me. Amen. Living, listen to this now, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Living the good life which he prearranged. So let's say to look, God has pre God has set up things for you to live a good life. I say it's an easy life, but he has prearranged for you to live a good life that he has prearranged for us and made ready for us to live. So I want to say with me as we close this morning. God has set me up to lead a good life. And I am ready to live it. As a child of God and join here with Christ. It is my eternal identity. God wants us to live a good life. God has set up things for you to live a good life. On Glorious Night, it said to you, 24, the year of open doors. And there were three elements to that. One was the blessings, the open door blessings. In other words, if you need a blessing, God is willing, capable, and able to bring that blessing to pass. The second one was the open door of prayer. When we come before God, we've got to believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder. 
of those who diligently seek him. I will say diligently as in those who seriously seek God. Who come before God with serious intention. And the third open door is the open door of the heart. When you come before God, you got to come with the right heart. So if you want to receive from God, you start it and you bring back up. You set your heart right before God. Engage God in prayer. And God is able to grant blessings in your life. That is who you are. A child of God. That God has determined to live a life of blessing. Will it be easy? Not always. But I'm saying to us as a church this morning that God has prepared and God has a plan for all of us to live the best life possible. But it starts when we agree and come into the identity that God shows us about ourselves. Something God will show us and it's for like home is no better. Sometimes he will show us like he did with David. You are the man that I need to deal with. Let's purpose as we can go through this year to set things right with God. Let's set things, let's get things right with God. Whatever God is challenging us about in our lives, let's sit down with God. In the Old Testament, he said to Israel, Look, come let us reason. God has always been a reasonable God. He said, Look, though your sin be as carried, though they be crimson, they're going to be white as well. What was he saying? I can deal with any issue that you have. I can't deal with it. So let's keep our trust and confidence in God this morning, even as we will close this service. Let's bow our heads as we give God thanks. Father, we thank you for the question this morning of identity. Father, may we not walk in our own rumored identity, but I pray, God, that our identity would be that which you have revealed to us having examined us and searched us and known, having known us, that Father, you would show us where we are at individually. I pray, God, that whatever you show us, we would agree with it and take the step that you would guide us in to set things right. We thank you that we are your workmanship. You made all of us with a plan for our lives. And God, you've arranged and you've set up things that we can truly walk in the identity that you have birthed us in the earth to have. I pray, God, for each of us, that none of us, Father, will leave this life falling short of who you have purposed us, each of us, to be. We want to thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that is sufficient in all things. And we give you thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me just officially give you a welcome on behalf of the local board and the membership of Shekinah. I want to extend a warm welcome to all of our any visitors who are here for the very, very first time. I want to ask you just to raise your hand. Let me have two from our Padmore family. Yes, welcome, God bless you. And there are others here who were, you've been here before, and we extend a warm welcome to you as well. We thank you for choosing uh, Shekinah this morning. Just to inform you as well, Dr. Parkman is speaking on the prayers this morning, so we pray God's grace on him as he will minister the word there. Um, tomorrow is a my holiday. First we have some 
some relaxation and fun plan, whatever your concept is, whether it is 12 hours of sleep, whatever your concept is, it's just you will have a good and refreshing bank holiday. Amen. We just want to acknowledge the birthdays uh, in the month of January. Uh, before we do that, I just want to acknowledge Sister Joyce Lynn Sealy back with us because of her recovery from her getting the Eagles vision on tour. But the brother is safe. He has a, a, a what, what are the words we use in having fight? Virtuous, in bad words, intelligent, capable. So brother, you, you can know, watch good for good things. And as a society, are recovering, because that God will continue to heal. So the birthdays of the gate this, this month, we have Sister Melissa on the 6th, Sister Victoria on the 9th, Jeanette on the 11th, Cynthia, Calendar Bath on the 12th, and coming up, Sister Marjorie Born on the 2nd, and this one the last. And then Brother Virtus rounding it off. So tomorrow will be Sister Marjorie's past day. But we know there are usually some persons who are not up here, they're not members. This is just even from the members list. But we all we, we sometimes have persons here who celebrate, have a birthday in the month. So we don't want to let you go without acknowledging you. So if you're here, you have a birthday in January, can you just wave your hand so we can see any January persons? No more January? Okay. So birthday blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of January. And we just want to bless God with our giving at this time. We're going to invite the ushers to come swiftly as we would bless God with our giving. And then after he will be dismissed, we're going to do a little different this morning. So we're going to say a prayer, a blessing on the offering, a dismissal prayer. And then as you give your offering, you're free to greet someone. Someone, at least some, at least someone. And then you can make your will. Don't run away for greeting somebody. Greet a couple of folks and then you can step up quietly. Um, so we're going to just bless the offerings and we will say this in some prayer as well. Okay. General Father, we thank you for life, talents, and gift things that we can indeed receive a return that we can indeed give back to you. We thank you for our various jobs and means of employment. Pray your blessing upon them. We pray that as we engage them through you, God, that it will not just be a chore, but we pray that in the midst of it all, we will find some sense of purpose and calling in all that we do. We want to thank you for blessing this offering, that it will be used for the furthering of your kingdom, that men and men, boys and girls will come to know Christ. And in these times, Father, we are so mindful that we need the gospel to be spread across not only our nation, but the wider world. We thank you for the privilege that we have in partnering in this purpose. So we thank you for blessing us even as we would give, and even as we would go from this place today, we are praying, God, that you would go with us Cause us to be mindful of who we are and whose we are. To know, God, that we can call upon you and you will answer. And you are able to show us great and mighty things that we know not of. We pray that this year will be a year of enlargement, new perspective, not only of who you are, but, God, of, of who we are as well. So bless us together as we go through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last thing we'll continue to play the song and then we will make our way. God bless you and have a fantastic week.